what are the alternatives? As we have seen, there is no complete solution to this problem, so what kind of navigation could we use to replace the GPS? And by the way, all the things we are going to discuss now are real, that is, are real options being assessed by research teams. The term they use is old PNT, that is alternative positioning navigation and timing. One of the most attainable possibilities is to add PNT signals to RF signals that exist already. Data links, for example, are a good candidate. However, there must be still a reference emitter that knows its exact position on the data link network. There are currently developments to extend the Link 16 in space, thus relying on satellites that could double as positioning systems. But the jamming of a data link is still an option. Another possibility is using signals of opportunity, cellular towers, radio and TV. This could be used for position and extracting clocks, depending on the specific signal. However, it is still radio frequency signals, in some respects even easier to jam than the GPS. These signals are also easy to fake, while the encrypted GPS is easily verifiable. A different approach is using gravity and inertia. In fact, inertial navigation is quite an old approach and the threat to GPS have brought to new research to make inertial navigation better. However, it is physically impossible to eliminate the drift, that is the cumulative error of position as the inertial unit is moving and it is unlikely that this will ever reach the level of accuracy allowed by GPS. Moreover, it doesn't provide a clock signal itself. Another approach that has been in use for several decades and it is now being revived is using ground elevation or bathymetry. Cruise missiles use radar altimeters to navigate, matching returned signals with an onboard elevation map. The same could be done with sonar on water, however, this requires accurate mapping preventive mapping, and the mapping on land may get old quite quickly due to the action of man. Moreover, it is not a passive navigation, particularly in the case of sonar, but it could be quite accurate. However, no clock signal in this case too. Another proposal is reviving celestial navigation based on stars, the moon, the sun, and so on. This is an extremely old approach, and automated celestial navigations had some applications in the 50s and the 60s. It could be quite accurate, and it is unjammable. We may expect it to become even better if re-implemented with modern technology. The drawback is its sensitivity to atmospheric conditions, since it should work mostly in the optical window. In this case, some exact timing information should be possible, but not at constant frequencies. A science fiction-like approach is using crustal magnetics. They, they call it like this, just one word. When the rocks form either emerging from the mantle in the middle of the oceanic ridges or by volcanic activity on the continents, they solidify, obviously. <laughs> During this process, their components lock inside a trace of the planet's magnetic field at the time of the rock formation. If these fossil magnetic fields could be accurately mapped and detected, they would provide a reference grid that could be used for navigation. This approach works on land and sea, it is passive and it is unjammable. It is still unclear how accurate it could be or how much the human activity could interfere with this kind of magnetic navigation. Once again though, no clock signal. So these are really exotic solutions, but the most likely line of evolution will be a combination of different technologies in order to reduce the dependency on the GPS and mitigate its outages. And this means that complexity, costs, resource intensity, and so on will increase. Considering the diffusion of the GPS, everything and everyone will be effective. So we have interesting times ahead.